Hello, today we are talking about an AWS tool and service, a category, if you like, that has lots of different cool stuff. It's probably one of the most widely known and widely used AWS services. It is storage. So we're going to have a look at the different options for storage in AWS. It's going to be a blast. We're going to churn through them. So up we go, counting down the storage services in AWS. So first of all, what? are storage services and why the heck should we even care about them in the first place? Well, cloud storage is like having a hard drive on your internet where you can just store pretty much any digital thing that you want to store. <laughs> is it a photo? Is it a movie? Is it text? Is it code? Uh, is it music? It could just be whatever you like, really. There's a place that you can store it in AWS. It's like a great big storage warehouse just for all your digital stuff. Now remember, AWS is mostly used by companies. So, you know, it's like you've got your personal Google Drive or you've got your personal OneDrive or whatever it is that you're using in Dropbox. And then AWS is like the business version of it. So everything is kind of designed for bigger and more varied types of data that you want to store. The advantage here is that small businesses can pay a pretty low price because of that shared model and the economies of scale that comes with using AWS. It also makes for really easy file sharing. So if you wanted to share your files between different parts of your application or different parts of the company, then AWS makes that very easy. For larger corporations, think Netflix and Spotify that have very large amounts of data, they're using AWS to store all of that information, all of those movies, all of the music that they're using and giving to their, their end users, it's all been stored in these exact storage services that we're going to talk about next. If you're a developer and you're thinking about how this is useful for me, well, often code is backed up in AWS. So for version control, for code sharing, for application hosting, these are all things that can be stored in these AWS storage services. So what are some of the common AWS storage services out there? We have Amazon S3, which stands for Simple Storage Service. S times three. And this is kind of the most simple one, the most common one. Think about it just like the big warehouse where you can store all of your stuff. It all just goes in there and you know it's going to be safe. So this is great for photos, videos, files. You can secure and manage all your data here safely in AWS. Next up is EBS, which stands for the Elastic Block Store. And this is a little different because it allows you to attach storage to your EC2 instances. What the heck is that? We're going to get into that later. But when you set up an EC2 instance, which we will get to, don't worry about it, then you can attach this storage to your EC2 instance. And it's going to give you a lot of kind of room there to grow whatever it is that you want to build and, and have a good time. So Think about this one as like adding on an extra room to your house. So you've got your house, which is your EC2 instance, and then you're like, man, we need some more storage. So you're just going to add on another room or buy like a little cabin that you put in the back of your garden or something like that. This is kind of like what this is. Next up is EFS, which is the Elastic File System. The Elastic File System is honestly really good for sharing files. So in here, you're not so much really uploading photos and videos and things like that. It's for really files that you want to share with other people. Number four is Amazon Glacier, which is a super cool name, a lot better than the EFS and the S3s, which can get kind of confusing. I like Glacier. It's good. It is what it says it is, which is basically a deep freeze. What this means is that you want to use this type of storage if you're putting something in that you're not going to access very often. This is great for backups because you can just put everything in there. You know that you're only going to use it in a real emergency. So it's not like you're going in there every day or, you know, 10 times a minute or something like that, whatever it is. It's really for the archiving and the backups. And finally, we have Amazon RDS, which is the relational database service. And this is actually where we're looking at. We don't just want to chuck everything into like this bucket or this warehouse. We actually want a bit of a database here. Like let's put some structure around this so that we can query data. We can actually start to pull out bits and pieces that we want. Like there's a system here that we can use. It's not just storage 
or a storage unit, this is like a library where there's things are catalogs, there's a way of searching for different things. You can pull things out when you need them. So this is what the database service is about. All right, and that's kind of the five most popular storage services in AWS. We're gonna be diving deep into each of these in later videos and content. So stay around if you're interested. Otherwise, I hope that that was useful. You know some of the acronyms now, what they mean. Maybe go back and test yourself. Can you learn these by heart? Can you have a bit of a quiz for yourself? Um, and we'll see you in the next video.